lovely to see um, so many of you here and um, some of you familiar faces and um, some of you I know from when you did the Pilates um, in the summer block and um, obviously some of you will be your first time doing Pilates, others of you you'll have a lot of Pilates experience so please just take it at your own level and um, don't feel you have to push on and do the more advanced exercises. I've tried to kind of cater for everybody so there's certain exercises that don't feel comfortable for you or you know it's your first time doing Pilates just stick to the easier options um, and we can build it up as the as the weeks progress also if any of you have any little injuries or niggles if there's certain movements that you know that aren't good for you um, or that don't feel comfortable as we're doing it please don't push yourself to do those movements and um, you're in control of your body and in control of this workout so Please don't do anything um, that you don't feel comfortable with. So, does anybody have any um, questions before we get started? Feel free throughout the session if you do have any questions, either just unmute yourself and ask, or because it's quite a large group, you might want to just um, type in the chat function. I'll try and keep an eye on that as we go through. So, I've just seen there's a couple more people here to let in. Let's do that. And we're going to start with our warm up in standing. So come on up onto your feet. Make sure that you've got plenty of room um, around you. Oh, there's another person to let in. Perfect. Okay. So just making sure you've got plenty of space around you. You're not going to end up hitting the um, coffee table or any furniture around you. And to begin with, we're just going to start with getting a little bit of movement through our body. So don't think too much about your posture, just bringing a little bit of movement. I'm going to sweep the arm across to one side and then across to the other side. So just a nice free flowing movement, sweeping the arm one side and then the next. And from here we're going to take one arm, circle it behind the body. If we do that, we're rotating and then switch to the other side. So again, just a nice free flowing movement, allowing that rotation to happen right the way through your body. And then we're going back to that first exercise, just sweeping to the side, once more to each side, and then take it into that rotation behind for four, three, two, and just repeat that little sequence again. So sweep to the side. Well done, and rotate behind, four, three, two, and one. So from here, we're going to go into a little bit of balance work. We're going to step out onto the left leg, reach up with your fingertips away with your foot as we come into a star pose. So you want to be strong on that supporting leg. Nice and tall through your spine, really reaching through those fingers, reaching away through the toes. Then turn over that leg and come into an arabesque. Try and hold that strong and steady. Try to have your hips nice and level. Again, length through the spine. So as if there's a string attached to the top of your head, come on, pulling away in your toes, keeping that length through your body. And then we're going to switch to the other side. So we come into our star pose. Bend away through the fingers, through the toes. Strong through your center, strong through that supporting leg. And then turn over that leg into your arabesque. Long, tall posture. We're going to do that once more on each side. So into that star pose. Into our best. Control. Other side, reach up. Star pose, strong and long. And then over the opposite leg. Into our best. From there, step that leg down and reach up through the body. We're going to sink through the legs. And then come back up. So just warming up through the legs, knees going in line with your second toe as you sink down. Bring the arms in as we reach out. 
and in. Just so you can combine to deep breathing. Breathing out as you go down and then breathe in as you come up. Lovely, well done. And then holding in that position, just pulse with the arms, little hundreds pulses. Make sure those knees are trapped in line with your um, second toe. You've got a slight gap in underneath the arch of your foot, you're not rolling forwards. Switching on through the glutes to push those knees out. Keeping that length through your body as we pulse, pulse, pulse. Then hold it here and pulse with the legs. So just working a little bit of endurance. And then pulse again, pulse for the arm. Now I'm not joking here. I can see somebody is needing to play. So you keep going. I'll just let them in. And you should hopefully be feeling those legs by now. From here, straighten back up. We're going to turn over the left leg. You might have remembered from the summer we did the Pilates roll down quite a lot in our warm ups. This time we're doing the Pilates roll down over the one leg. So same things apply. Bring your chin to your chest. Then roll down through your upper back. Then through your lower back. Reach your fingertips down that leg. Just enjoy that stretch through the front leg. And then re-stacking up from the base of the spine, piece by piece by piece. Do that once more over this side. So just rolling through, reaching down the leg, and then nice flowing movement as we come back up. We're going to switch that to the other side. So chin comes to chest, roll down through the spine, drawing in through your abs, and then re stacking all the way back up. Last time on this side, rolling down, bit by bit by bit, trying to feel each part of your back, each vertebra moving one at a time, a bit of a building block, stacking them back up, one on top of the other, into that upright position. We're going to come back to the middle, this time keeping the feet wide, we're going to do our roll down in the middle, so chin comes to chest, roll through that upper back, mid back, down through the lower back, allow your hands to hang heavy, your head to be nice and loose. And again, just feeling that stretch through the back of the legs, nice open feeling through the spine, and then restack from the base of the spine, piece by piece, coming back to the middle. One last time, I'm going to hold it at the bottom this time. So coming back down, rolling down through the spine. Allow the hands to hang heavy. Let's say just enjoying that stretch through the legs. And if your hands are not quite touching the floor, just put a little bend in your knees. Then we're actually going to continue that bend down just to open out through the hips. Now, if this doesn't feel comfortable on your hips, feel free just to stay in your forward fold position. So if this feels fine in this position, we're going to take one hand down to the floor and just reach the other hand up towards the ceiling to get a little bit of stretch into rotation. And then switch that to the other side. So just reaching that arm up to the ceiling, mobilizing the hips and the upper back at the same time. Repeat that once more to each side. The last time. And then from here, we're going to come down to a lying position onto our mat. So I'm just going to readjust my camera here. So you can see my mat. And coming down to lie onto your back. Going to bring the feet in towards the body. As you look down to your legs, you should have hips, knees, and ankles 
in alignment. So it's nice to have your knees knocking together or falling out to the side. Nice straight front half alignment, hips, knees, and pull. Hands are just nicely relaxed by the side of the body. And from here, we're going to tilt our pelvis backwards and flatten our back into the mat. Then we're going to continue that movement, peeling the tailbone off the mat, lifting up, going one vertebra at a time into our Pilates shoulder bridge. From the top, we come down the same way, getting that nice movement through the spine. We touch down at the top of the spine, first of all. Roll down, touching those ribs down, lower back, and then last thing to move is our pelvis as we bring it back into that neutral position. We're going to make that a little bit quicker, work it with our breathing. So we inhale to prepare, exhale, breathe out as you roll up into your bridge position. Inhale to hold that at the top, and then exhale, breathing out as you return back to that start position. Just continue that, working with your own breath in your own time. Again, just feeling that nice flow of movement. Feeling how you switch on gently through your center to initiate that movement, switching on through the glutes, back of the hips, as you come into that top position, opening out through the front of the hips. As you're rolling up and down, just make sure you're keeping those knees in line. They're not knocking together or falling out to the side. And as you do this, try not to lift too high. So as you get to the top of the movement, you don't want to have a big arch in your lower back. So you want to keep that just in a nice straight position. Make sure as well, no pressure into your neck at the top of the movement. You don't want to lift up too high and then rolling back down. Now on this next one, we're going to hold the movement at the top. Let's so say making sure you're not lifting too high, no arch in your lower back. Open through the front of your hips. So you might be quite tight through front hips, so a little bit of stretch there. And we're going to hold this position, connect a little bit stronger to our left side. So this that left foot is just pressing into the mat a little bit stronger allow the right leg to float up into the air. Now as you do this there shouldn't be any movement through your hips. As you lift the leg if you notice that your back starts to arch or your hips dropping down then just stay in a double leg position. If you feel that your pelvis is staying in a good position though just alternate from side to side there. So you press a little bit stronger on the opposite side, toes peel away and the leg reaches up to the ceiling and just in your own time there switching from side to side if you're on a double leg you're not going for that single leg option so just bring your arms up and you're going to scissor your arms one up and one down just working for a little bit of endurance in your shoulder bridge position if you're taking a single leg option you're going to hold it on a single leg and this leg comes down and then float back up. So the range that you work through is just what you can control. You come down as far as you can without arching your back, and you lift up as high as you can without your pelvis rounding over. We're just going to stick on that single leg. With all of these exercises, take a break at any time if you need to, and then just come back to them when you feel ready. And then we're going to switch to the opposite side. So fold that leg back in, reach the other one to the ceiling, and then we're going to single leg on this side. Remembering we're wanting the pelvis to stay completely still, not rocking from side to side or dropping lower and lower. Try and keep those hips squeezing up as you do the exercise. Good, well done, we'll do one more here. Then fold that leg back in. We're gonna come down the same as we did before. So rolling down from the top of your spine. 
piece by piece by piece until you're lying on your back there. Just walk your feet a little bit further away from you. Again, making sure hips, knees, ankles are in line. Your pelvis wants to be in what we call its neutral position. So a slight little gap underneath your back. You don't want to force your back down into the mat. Just taking a, in a sort of natural resting position. So you're not forcing it into any position. Your rib cage is just gently contacting the mat beneath you. We're going to take our hands and place them in behind our head. For those of you who did some classes over the summer, you might remember our oblique prep. With our oblique prep, what we're aiming to do is switch on through these muscles across across the front of our um, stomach, across the front of our abs. We're going to think about lifting and bringing the opposite rib cage and shoulder blade around towards the opposite hip. So it's a lift with a little rotation. And then we lower back down. We're going to do that to the opposite side. So always alternating one side to the other. Now we're just combining this with your breathing, breathing out as you lift, and then breathing in as you return. Now, as you do this exercise, your pelvis should stay completely still. It's almost like your pelvis is sinking down into cement and staying completely still. So as you rotate towards the opposite pelvis, just make sure that the whole of the pelvis and the whole of the body isn't rolling uh, over to one side, it's staying still. And also make sure that as you rotate, you're not tilting the pelvis backwards and flattening the back into the bed, into the mat. So just keeping it nice and still. All of the movement coming from the upper body. Try to keep your nose in line with your chest as you rotate, so you're not putting any strain onto your neck. You don't want, doesn't want to be a neck rotation. All of the rotations coming from the shoulder and the ribs. So I say just alternating that one side to the other. Now, if this feels quite easy for you, the next progression is to come up into our double tabletop. So double tabletop, you lift one knee and foot off to a 90-90 position. Connect a little bit stronger through your abs, still keeping pelvis lower back in neutral, and we float that second leg up. From there, the knees and the ankles just come gently together, and you continue with that rotation from side to side. So the choice is yours. You can come up into this double tabletop position and say that's a bit more challenging on the abs, or you can stick with the feet on the floor. If you come up into this position and you're starting to feel any pressure through your lower back, then obviously just stick at the lower level, come back down so you've got your feet on the floor. So we're just starting waking up these muscles that cross across the front of your abdomen. Make sure you're not holding your breath. And then we're going to progress this on a little bit further. So on this next one, as we rotate, we're going to extend away through the opposite leg. You then come back in and switch to the other side. So guess what I'm going to say here? Make sure the pelvis is staying still. That as you extend that leg away, you're not rotating or arching your back. We've still got that rotation through the upper body, but the leg is extending straight away from you. Now, if you've got your feet on the floor, you can do the, this same exercise just by sliding the leg away and back in. Sliding away and back in. So hopefully, whichever exercise you're doing, you should be starting to feel that those abs are working for you now. If it's still feeling quite easy, your next progression is to keep the head and shoulders lifted and we scoot from side to side. Now, as you do this exercise, just make sure this leg isn't coming into your chest. It wants to stop directly over your hip. As we pedal from side to side. 
Now, I'm just going to come and have a quick check of how you're doing here. Keep that going. I can see any of you. Oh, well done. This looks good. Good job, good job. Okay. Just a couple more. Well done. Last one. Then rest those head and shoulders down to the floor. Come down one leg at a time. Back into what we call our Pilates rest position. You may find it a little bit more comfortable in this position just to put a little block and a little cushion. So maybe like a folded towel or if you've got a Pilates cushion in underneath the back of your head, just to keep your head in its neutral resting position as well. So on this next exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to take the hands just comfortably out to the side. In that last exercise, we're rotating the upper body and keeping our pelvis still. On this exercise, we're going to keep our ribs and upper body still and rotate through the pelvis. From here, what we do is we bring the knees, bring the knees towards me. And as you do that, you peel the pelvis off the mat Control the legs over to the side, only as far as you can control, and then use that strength through your core to bring the pelvis and the knees back into alignment. Switch that to the other side. So we rotate the knees away from me, and this time you can take a little turn of your head towards me. You can see you should be have your feet lock together, the pelvis is lifting up, and then using your abs to control that pelvis back as the knees come back to the ceiling. So you can stick here with the feet on the ground, or if you'd rather, you can come back to that tabletop position and do the exercise here. So we roll the knees, pelvis lift. You may find you're not able to get as far under control on this exercise. Use the abs to control the movement back and then switch to the other side. So it's almost like you're pushing that top knee forwards, lifting the pelvis, and then using that control to bring the pelvis back. Always keeping that 90 90 position through the legs. So, whichever option you've taken, either with the feet lifted or the feet on the floor. Just continue with this. As you drop the knees to one side, you can just look to the opposite side. To get a little bit of rotation right the way through the body. And on this next one, when you come back to the middle, if you've got your feet lifted, just bringing them back onto the mat and take your feet out so that they're all not quite fully straight. So you want to have a little bend within them. We're going to move on to our abdo prep. So this is again working through the abs, but a little bit more targeted at your six pack muscle. So from here, what I want you to imagine is you've got little strings on the bottom of your ribs. We're going to pull on those strings and glide your ribs down towards your pelvis, switching on through your core. You still want your pelvis in neutral, so be careful as you lift into this position, you haven't tilted your pelvis backwards. You still want to have that in neutral. And then from those strings, just controlling back towards the floor. So we're going to bring in the arms with this. We're going to start with the arms overhead. And as you bring the arms down, we peel the ribs down to the pelvis. And as you control back to the mat, we take the arms overhead, but without the ribs popping up. So try and keep them just gently resting down as you take the arms over. As you come up, just eye gaze to the opposite wall, making sure there's that length through the back of your neck. You don't want your chin to be poking up and putting stress on your neck.
So again, you want smiling to combine this with your breathing. So just breathing out as you lift and breathe in as you lower. Good, well done, keeping that going. So for those of you who are new to Pilates, you might want to just sit here. You might be finding actually it's a bit, um, bit of um, hard work for your neck. So if you feel any strain for your neck, you can use one hand behind your head as you do this exercise, not to pull on your head, but just to support the weight of your head. So still keeping that length through the back of your neck if you've taken that option. So say, if you new to Pilates, you might want to stick here. Otherwise, you might want to join me on this next one to go into our full teaser. So we come to that same position, but then we reach the arms overhead, come into the seated position. Then from that seated position, we need to tilt the pelvis backwards, connect to our center. And just as we did with the bridging, we're aiming to touch down one vertebra after the other, as we lower back down, into that start position. So completely up to you. You can either do your abdomen prep here with or without the hand behind your head or join me for your full teaser where we continue that movement up into seating. Position. Always remember to come back, switch on for your core as you roll up your sit bones, keep that strength through your abs so you're not putting any pressure onto your lower back. Obviously, if this isn't feeling good for you, if you're feeling any pressure into your lower back, then obviously don't continue with the movement. Um, but if it is feeling good, try and continue the movement. Really good exercise for the abs and for that control through the back and pelvis. As you come up, it shouldn't be momentum lifting you up. So try and keep control throughout the whole movement. It's almost like someone's grabbing hold of your hands and lifting them up to the ceiling as you come into that seated position. And then as you lower down, folding in the middle and controlling all the way back down. I'm just going to adjust my camera a little bit um, so you can see my neck. Use it as an opportunity to have a little look at how you're going with that. So these look really nice. The lovely control on the way down there. Definitely shouldn't be a collapse down onto the mat. Oh yeah, these are all looking very good. Perfect. Well done. I can see a few of you there just coming back down. On this next one, when you get back to your seated position, we're going to hold it there. And we're going to work on our, that sort of last bit of movement. Um, so not going right the way down to the floor. First of all, just a little note, if in sitting you're finding it uncomfortable to sit right onto your sit bones, if you're rocking off your sit bones, if you do have a little block, like a yoga block, it's sometimes helpful to place that in underneath your hip, just makes it a little bit easier to get into that upright position. So if you find it uncomfortable um, to get into sitting, maybe have a try if you do have a little bit of um, into that. So from here, as you did with the teaser, you round through your lower back, keep that control through your abs. You're just going to roll back as far as you can control and then come back to your seated position. So you can roll off your sit bones, use your abs so they should feel really strong and drawing in towards you. Make sure they're not doming out and that you're not holding your breath. As you come back to that seated position, try not to overextend and over correct, just coming to that upright position, rolling off there, keeping that strength as the abs drawing. Try not to hunch your shoulders up as well to keep them controlling down as you continue with the exercise. So it's all about using that abdominal control. Mm 
can make the plan last one. So on this next one, as we come up, we're going to circle the arms overhead and just bring them to the side of the body. Um, side of the body with the fingertips pointing out to the side. From this position, we're going to first of all think about our posture. So make sure that you're not collapsing down. Make sure that you're lifting up tall and that your shoulders are relaxing down to the side. Make sure that you're not slumped through your back, but at the same time that you're not overcorrecting and sticking your ribs forward. So it's just in that straight line position. And from this position, we're going to lift the hips up in the air. So it's almost like a reverse plank that we're coming into. Your eyes are going to stay at the wall in front of you. So don't look up at the ceiling. That's going to put a strain onto your neck. Always looking at the wall. Keep strong through your arms and try and keep open through the front of your chest. And then control back down to our start position. So we're going to again combine this with our breathing, make it a little bit quicker, a little bit smoother. So inhale to repair. Exhale as we float the ribs, the hips up. Inhale to hold at the top, and then exhale as you fold in the middle, just nice and softly back to the ground. So keeping that going, working with your own breath in your own time. If you're finding this is really uncomfortable um, or a little bit too difficult, you can bend your knees and continue the exercise here, which is slightly easier. If you're finding it's putting pressure through your wrist, you can do the exercise on your knuckles, either here or in that first option, which just puts your wrist in a bit of a stronger position. So just continuing with that, let's say working in your own time, your own level. Aim for that nice straight position through the body as you lift and lower the whole time, keeping your shoulders open and relaxed down. We're just going to do another couple here. The last one. And then from there, you're going to turn towards me come down onto your forearm and just bend your knees in front. Now it's really easy when you get into this position just to kind of like slump down. All I want to do is again bring you into a good starting position. So just lifting those ribs, controlling through the shoulders so your shoulders should feel nice and relaxed down but in a strong supporting position. Head just in line with your trunk. So again we're keeping that nice straight line through the body from the crown of the head down to the pelvis. And from here, hands is on the top of your thigh. We reach it up and over. And as you continue reaching over, you're going to lift your hips and try and get a curve through the upper part of your body. We then bring the arm down and just lightly touch down, keeping that straight position. And back we go again. Lovely. And control down, lightly, lightly touch and go again. All the way high you can. Again, we're looking for a length through the body with this. As if someone was pulling on those fingertips, really reaching through that top part of your body and then controlling down without slumping. Last one here. And then if you want to, your next option is to come onto your feet and onto your hands. Again, this is one that um, if you've done Pilates class with me, you will recognize our side bend here. So we've got our ankles crossed, kneecap is pointing up towards the ceiling. Again, our start position, we're not slumping down, we're keeping those ribs lifted. It's almost like someone has a band in underneath those ribs and is lifting you into position. From here, same as before, the arm goes up and over. 
but this time your body travels over your hand and we will reach and lift the hip in that full five point position. As you come back down, you need to travel back. Hips need to travel back towards your feet as you come to the start position. So option is yours. You can either stick with this exercise or if you'd rather drop back to that first exercise that we did on the forearm and on the knees. So whichever one you want to do, we're going to do another four of these. You can do a combination if you like. Some on your hands and feet and some on your knees and elbows. Whichever option you're taking, thinking about being strong through your core, strong through that underside of your body, reaching and stretching through the top side of your body and keeping good control to the movement the whole time. Because I've been talking away there, I've a little bit lost count, but I think, I think that's four. We're going to, from here, switch and do the same exercises on the other side. So just bring the legs round, drop down onto the forearm, onto the knees, keeping that nice start position, reaching up and over and gently touching back down. So we're going to do five at this level. Then you can either stay and do another five at this level or we're going up onto your hand and feet for our five bend at level two. So on this next one, if you want to progress to that higher level, just crossing the ankles, coming onto the hand, and we're reaching up and over to our side bend here, releasing back as we take the hand. So it's really quite challenging on this shoulder. If you're feeling um, any discomfort through the shoulder, you feel like you can't control the movement, and again, obviously, drop back to the level before. Make sure that the elbow is slightly soft. You don't want it to be bent, but at the same time, you don't want to lock it straight. So again, making sure you've got nice control over the whole of that upper limb. You know, because you have the dreadful at counting. So I'm not, I think this is five. I think this is five, if I promise. So we're going to finish there. And then our last little set of exercises, we're going to come round onto our hands and knees. We're going to start just with a little bit of movement through the upper back. We're going to keep the pelvis nice and still. Just take one hand and reach it in underneath the body. As you do that, your ear comes down towards the mat and you bend that opposite arm. And then switch that to the other side. So we thread the arm underneath, bend the opposite elbow, ear comes down. And then back to your start position. So you're just keeping that going, alternating side to side. As you come down, just a very light touch. You're not wanting to collapse your head down onto the mat. Just gently resting and then coming back. Now to give this a little bit more of a challenge in terms of your control, as we do this next one, rotating in underneath, we're going to extend the opposite leg away from us. And then back, switch to the other side. So extend the leg away. As you reach under your body, again, really important not to collapse down. In fact, try and hover your head just above the mat rather than touching it down and really reach that leg away. Again, if someone's pulling on that leg, I'm gonna come and have a little look at how you're getting on with that one. Oh, this is good, well done. Let's say really reach away with that opposite leg. Well done, yeah, good, good. 
Don't worry if you do fall over, that's a good sign, shows that you're challenging yourselves and challenging that control. So. But another little one that challenges the balance and control coming up next. So when you come back to your hands and knees, this time what we're going to do is we're going to extend the leg away. We're also going to extend away through the same arm. So you extend away through the same arm and leg, rotate the arm over the top and take a hold of your foot for a little bit of a stretch through the front of that hip. So make sure you're not putting any pressure onto your lower back, should be nice and open across your shoulders. And opening up through that front of the hip. Lovely, then circle the arm over, control back to your kneeling position and then switch that to the opposite side. You don't need to turn around, I'll just turn around so it's easy for you to see what I'm doing. Reaching over, grabbing that ankle and just holding that position. I was just about to say, don't try not to wobble. I nearly fell over myself. You might find that one side feels a little bit easier than the other. And then as you control that ground, going into that kneeling position, just sit back onto your heels, reach your fingertips forwards, and enjoy that stretch. So we're gonna move into just a couple of stretches to finish off with. So from here, tuck your toes under, reach your hips up towards the ceiling as we come into our Pilates V or down dog position. Wanting to really reach your hips up to the ceiling, try and press your shoulders towards your knees. If you're more flexible than I am, you might be able to reach those heels down towards the mat. And then from there, step forwards with your right leg into a big lunge position. Try to keep a straight line through your upper back. So if you find that you're really rounded through your back, you might want to come up onto your fingertips or onto one leg or onto both legs. Both legs are a little bit more challenging on the balance, um, but easier to get into a, a good position for your upper back. And then from there, just rotate towards that knee you've got bent at the front. You should feel that through the front of your back leg. You might feel it a little bit into the hamstrings on the front and a little bit into your upper back as you bring in that rotation. We're gonna come back, back to our down dog position. And take those hips up high. Try and straighten the legs, straighten out your upper back if you can, and lowering the heels down to the mat. Just try and breathe into the position. Don't force it, just do what, um, what you can. From there, step forward this time with the left leg. Find that lunge position. So you really try to open out through that back hip. Try not to have it in a rounded position and lengthening through the whole of your spine. From there, just as we did on the other side, rotate towards your bent knee as you bring that rotation in towards your upper body. Well done, good job.
I'll just come back on to that side. So from here, whichever leg you've got bent at the front, just lower it onto the mat and loosen the toes at the back. So you should be getting a nice stretch in through the front of that hip, kneecap pointing down towards the mat. You shouldn't feel any pressure into your lower back. So if you are, you might want to just bring your body down a little bit or think about lifting from your chest and moving from your upper back rather than just hinging to your lower back. If it's still not feeling comfortable, you can just bring that leg out to the side slightly for a, a little bit less of an intense stretch. And then to bring the focus more to the glutes on that front leg, I'm going to walk the hands forwards and just fold over that front leg. Again, if that's not feeling comfortable for you to go right the way down, just hold it where it's comfortable for you. And if the movement doesn't feel good at all, then obviously just come out of that position. Okay, from there, we're gonna bring that back leg all the way around and place it over the opposite side. So you're aiming to try and keep your hip bone on the floor. I'll turn to the front so you can see what I'm thinking. Try to keep your hips on the floor, try not to let that lift. If you feel it's lifting a lot, you might find it easier to straighten out that bottom leg. So choice is yours, either with the leg out straight or with it bent in. And then again, we're gonna bring some rotation to the upper body. So just bring that arm across, other hand behind you and keeping your upper um, chest lifted, just take a little rotation round. You might find that that increases the stretch into those glutes as well. So from here, whichever leg you've got on top wants to come down onto the floor and the other leg goes out behind. And we're back in our stretch here. So if you can, keeping the body upright, getting a nice stretch through those hip flexors, making sure there's no pinching into the lower back. And then to bring the stretch more to the glutes on that front leg, just folding over that front leg, allowing your head just to rest down onto the mat. As with all of these stretches, just try and relax into them. And definitely don't force your body into a position that it doesn't feel comfortable with. as we did on the other side, bring that back leg all the way around, as I'll turn to the front so you can see what I'm doing, all the way around, over that other leg, try and get your hip square, and then bringing opposite arm through, and just taking that twist through your upper body. All the time, keeping that length through your spine, so the spine nice and long, rather than rounding forwards. If you're struggling with the flexibility, as I said on the other side, you might want to just straighten out that other leg and that makes it slightly easier. Well done, from that whichever position you're in, we're gonna come back into our shell stretch. If it doesn't feel comfortable for you to have your hips resting right the way into the heels, you can keep your hips lifted. Either with the hips high or sitting all the way back, just allow your forehead to gently contact the mat and your arms just to be relaxed by your side, either in front or at the sides of your body. Just take some nice deep breaths. Well done, that is the end of our workout. I hope you've enjoyed it. And so it's so lovely to see so many of you on the call. 
Um, hopefully see a lot of you again next week. Um, we'll do some some more Pilates. Hopefully I haven't scared you off and you enjoyed the class. If you have any questions, please get back to me. If there's anything in particular you'd like me to change or you prefer me to work on, again, just let me know. Okay, thanks.